Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today we're going to look at divergence between price and various indicators. Uh, I didn't choose a lot of indicators, I just picked sort of the more common ones. But let's start out, there's four types of divergence. Positive divergence, negative divergence, hidden or reverse divergence, and then I've also thrown in some alternative divergences that are not often looked at. To start off with, on the daily charts, we can use divergence for long-term trades. So you can see divergence on a weekly chart, or if you want to go really far, you can look at a monthly chart. Or you can even go down as low as your daily chart. You can use it for trading physicals. On the longer term, you can use it for CFDs with leverage. Divergence is considered a lead in pending momentum change. <clears throat> in other words, just because we have divergence doesn't mean the price will move, but it often leads that change in momentum. We need two or more points on price, and the same on the indicators for divergence to be valid. Don't worry, I'll give you all the rules. To start off with, bullish divergence, uh, commonly referred to as positive divergence, is when price is making lower lows, but the indicator itself is making higher lows. And if you have a look at uh, the two lime green lines in the middle of the chart there, I've put the red vertical line to confirm the divergence. Remember, at the time, we wouldn't have seen to the right-hand side of that line. The divergence is confirmed when the stochastic crosses up through its moving average. Uh, obviously, that would have happened yesterday. Today, we can see it closed above, and then we can look for a trade. Uh, this particular example has two divergences. I just drew the first two in with the lime green. And then there's actually a longer-term divergence that I'm drawing in now where the stochastic later on confirmed again, uh, pushing us into that nice upward move there. On to the bearish side, negative divergence occurs when price is making higher highs, but the indicator itself is making lower highs. The one thing to notice here, the first two slides have got the indicators, and uh, the first one is an oversold position. This one is in an overbought position. The stochastic is really high. Uh, the price continued up for uh, more than a month. It looks like about six weeks. The price continued to rise, and the stochastic gave us, in fact, two divergences. That would have been the first one, and then it gave us the lime green line, which is the confirmed divergence. Again, the indicator crosses down through its moving average. The divergence is confirmed. The stop losses, should the price break above a previous high, uh, in this example, it would have been that level price breaks and closes higher, then we would stop out. The next divergence is confirmed over there, and it's lower than the breakout high. In other words, we would have had to try twice at this one. Uh, hidden divergence, I know some guys find it quite difficult to get this one uh, clear. Hidden divergence is when the price makes the higher low, in other words, the opposite of what we looked at first, but the indicator makes a lower low. Uh, the RSI is generally quite good at this type of divergence. Uh, it's a little bit slower than the stochastics. You know, stochastic is quick in that it goes from top to bottom pretty quickly or from bottom to top. RSI is a little bit slower in that respect. And we can see what happened here. We had price making the higher low. The RSI broke lower. Something to notice is that it didn't break the overbought level before going into the oversold direction. Uh, that is generally quite important for both of these types of divergences we've looked at, the hidden divergence and your standard divergence. We would like to see the indicator do it at one time. Uh, we don't want it breaking the, break the opposite uh, overbought, oversold levels uh, until we get to the alternative, of course. For day trading, um, I've used a five-minute chart here. This was just the other day. A five-minute chart with a stochastic. And we had a very clear double bottom. Uh, the left-hand side, we can see there was a little hammer formation over there. That becomes support. The price came down. The stochastic went oversold. Price then moved up a little bit, failed to make a new high, pulled down, and again found support with a Harami candle pattern. And we had stochastic divergence confirming this trade. And that was a pretty decent five-minute chart. <clears throat> a 
for the longer term, I used a 60 minute chart here with the MACD. It's a slower trend oscillator. Uh, I find it useful on 60 minutes and up. The MACD can go you know, 60 minute, two hour, daily uh, and weekly. And the interesting thing with this trade is we had the MACD giving us divergence on the hourly chart. And if you look in this area down here, that is the same place that the five minute chart gave us that double bottom with the two candle patterns plus the stochastic divergence. What that's called is confluence. We've got two totally different indicators, one being a really short-term oscillator on a very short-term time frame, uh, combined with a long-term trend type indicator on a much longer time frame. And we can see what happened. Price went up and found resistance at the gap. So that was a really good trade. Alternative divergence it can be described as using different data sets to gain an edge or different ways of using the oscillators. Most traders are looking at divergences discussed before this section. Here we're going to have a look at some different ideas and I don't see it around too often in the market so hopefully you get some benefit out of it. The first one is using a non-oscillator for directional confirmation. In other words, it's not necessarily a trade now idea, it is more an analysis tool. The second thing we're going to do is have a look at important oscillator highs and lows instead of divergence in the overbought or oversold areas. And we calculate this using the indicator pivot points. Uh, it's not the same as you know, high plus close plus low divided by three. This is the indicator's high and low points. And they can be in between the overbought and oversold areas. One of my favorites for this kind of divergence is on balance volume. We use it to check selling or buying strength, or buying or selling pressure, however you want to call it. The price on MMI dropped significantly, but the unbalanced volume indicator did not confirm the drop off. So we can see price falling from around 27 uh, all the way down to 19 Rand. Yet unbalanced volume, which is adding all the volume while the price is moving higher and subtracting the volume while price is moving lower. Uh, OBV did not confirm the sell-off, and that was quite an important reason to stay into a, a pretty decent dividend yielding company. In other words, you don't panic out, hold on, you can use your normal trading system to start looking for the bottoms to get long. OBV has confirmed, and that's quite an interesting thing. On the negative side, I never found on balance volume to be really good at this. Uh, I found it better as a buying idea. A stock has been sold off and the volume hasn't confirmed it. Now this is one where it gets a little bit tricky. Um, RSI and stochastic pivot divergence. This is based on important highs and lows of the actual oscillators as opposed to on uh, overbought to oversold areas. The two big red circles are the areas we want to look at. We've got the bottom one here, stochastic, giving us the first trade. That oscillator crossed below 20 over there, but it diverged later on a pivot point. In other words, somewhere around the middle. So stochastic was around 50, gives us price divergence. We've got the price pivots going lower, oscillator pivot going higher, and there was a short-term trading opportunity. The second one came on the RSI divergence. Again, the oscillator is right in the middle at the 50 line on an RSI. Price pivots lower, oscillators pivoted higher, and that was a pretty decent trading zone. You could have carried that through to that level. It is also higher than the previous levels, and the price is going higher confirming. So remember divergence is a trigger when the oscillator is making higher lows and the price is making higher lows that is a confirmation of trend. Uh, so here we had alternative divergence plus we had the oscillator confirming that trend direction. Here's another example uh, a little bit closer in. We had the JSE Limited, so that's the listed company, making lower pivots and we had the oscillator making higher pivots and again that stochastic is much higher than 20. It's not a standard divergence area and we can see what happened to the stock. 
after that divergence came through. On the right hand side, uh, this area here, we can see that there was divergence totally from an overbought area right down into an oversold area. That is not something we're looking at. So if the oscillator is drawing divergence all the way through from overbought to oversold, or oversold to overbought, it's not of interest. We want it to be across the bottoms like this, uh, where oscillator has gone up, pulled back, made the higher low. Here, there's no pullback. It's gone straight down. I'm not interested in that kind of divergence. Uh, and then we can see standard divergences on the right-hand side. Against price, the JC is looking weak. That can be an indication to exit and take your profit and walk away. You could even just take half your trade off and then see whether it breaks, uh, breaks that support at around 85 rand. Okay, just to put some detail into a trading plan. You know, we trade it like this across all time frames. Entry using a MACD and a stochastic. When the oscillator crosses its moving average, that confirms the divergence. So we can see where the MACD has made a higher low, the price has made a lower low, the MACD crosses above its signal line, uh, that nine period moving average, that is where we get confirmation of the divergence. Just because the oscillator has ticked up or down doesn't confirm. We have to wait for that moving average. The same thing with the stochastic. Uh, I normally just use a 10-3-3, you know, 10, 10, three, three, so a 3 smoothing plus a 3 moving average. The stochastic turns, closes above or below its average in the direction of the divergence. That confirms the divergence and we'd be looking the next day to make the entry or the next, uh, the next candle if you're trading uh, day trading. On the RSI, it's slightly different. Um, you can put a moving average on it to confirm if you want to. I find the RSI is too choppy and it crosses up and down through that average, that sort of gets you confused. So I prefer just to use the relevant signal lines. That would be uh, your standard 30 and 70 area, and again, just a 10 period RSI. Uh, and that is for shorter term. You know, If you wanted to look at a longer term RSI, you're welcome to try 14 or 21. Uh, the same with your stochastic. You can increase it 14 or 21 periods. Uh, on the MACD, I tend to stick with the 12, 26, 9. You can, if you are somebody who is using moving average crossovers, you can use those same two moving averages to create your MACD, and then you will get the divergences based on your underlying baseline trading system. The exit is a close above or below the price's high or low. So as I showed you previously, if the price breaks lower, so if we just uh, find a cleaner chart I've drawn over all of them, if we go over here, we've got our buying divergence on the MACD. The stop loss would simply be that support level. So if price had broken down through that, we would have exited the trade. Uh, that looks sometimes you get false exits. Yeah, that's just part of the business. But it works really well if it does fail and it actually starts to trend. Uh, the trend can be confirmed if the MACD goes up and actually makes a lower curve. So we get a MACD trend looking something like that. And then I thought I'd throw in two shares that um, gave buy signals this morning. The first one is Trueworths. Uh, we have an oversold stochastic. Oversold area, it's given us divergence, confirmed the divergence, and the price is sitting on a tiny little support level there. But it's pretty close to an average support based on, on history. You can wait for price to break above the resistance over there if you wanted to. Um, you could enter your trade you know, however you want to. You can split your entries, take half now and half on a break higher. And the stop loss would just simply be a close below that support in the 80-50 area. Uh, the second one is Lewis. And this time it's an alternative RSI divergence. There's also a bearish triangle on the stock. Okay, the expectation is that it's going to go down. The RSI is warning us through divergence that the downward momentum could be over. The confirmation on this one, I would wait for the chart pattern to break and close. In other words, 
this time it wouldn't be a rush trade. Wait to see if price breaks above 66.60 and then you could consider the entry. Uh, it brings us to the stop loss, of course, on this trade. It would have to be down at uh, below 64 Rand. That is support. Work out your position size according to that stop loss. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Uh, please feel free to pop those questions through. Thanks, Warren. Uh, ladies and gents, if you've got cues, put them in the uh, box. More than happy with that. Um, Warren, two that came through, and uh, you, 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 you then touched on both of them, I think, before, after the questions were asked, but let's put them out there anyway. Uh, time frames, as usually the rule is, we, we can pretty much these use these across any time frame. We could do a, a daily chart. You had a 60-minute there. Uh, we could also, I mean, if you wanted, we could go to a weekly chart. Yeah, uh, you know, I've even sort of had a look at these things on one minute chart to sharpen entries. Uh, you know, you can do it across the time frames. Just remember that your time frame dictates your target as well as your stop loss area. So you don't trade a small time frame with a massive target. Yeah, uh, fair point. Uh, then a question that just popped in now, which I think is a really good one, and I know Elder talks about it. He's, and the question is, what about you know maybe starting on a on a on a daily chart, you get a divergence, drop down to an hourly chart, uh, almost get a second divergence confirm that first one that you were seeing. In other words, kind of stacking it up again in, in your favor. Yeah, as we saw in the Aussie one, uh, that worked like that. The hourly had the MACD divergence. Uh, then the five minute confirmed the double bottom with the stochastic divergence. Uh, one of the things I had a problem with was if I take a daily stochastic, I get divergence, let's say on a daily. Uh, I then go down to the hourly, what happens if I don't get divergence? <laughs> then I'm not entering the trade because I'm not getting two divergences. Yeah. Um, so multiple time frames are great to have, let's say, a stochastic oversold giving me a buy signal and then waiting for the hourly to go oversold to give me a buy signal rather than trying to get two or three time frames to give me divergence. Um, it's, it, I found it difficult to get trades that did that often. So you get daily divergence, and then suddenly the, that chair just rockets the next day, and you don't get that hourly divergence yeah. to confirm it. Yep, got you on uh, that. Sorry, Simon, just, just one thing before we get to the mm -hmm. next one. Um, something that works really well, if you have a strongly trending uh, instrument, whether it be Forex or you know, shares, uh, the Aussie, if it's strongly trending and you've got your trend in place, these divergences in the direction of the trend are very good. Uh, in other words, you're not trying to pick ultimate market turning points. We're just trying to pick within the trend turning points. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So the continuation there. The other question coming through um, is, is around what can we use these on? And again, certainly you gave us examples there of the index um, and, and particular equities. We could use it on anything, gold, platinum, oil, shares. You know, if, 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 if TA works, TA works. Is that a fair point? Yeah, I think in this case, the chart is a chart is a chart. Uh, the only thing that does change sometimes from instrument to instrument is the time frame you use on the actual indicator. So, yeah, sometimes a five-period stochastic or five-period RSI works better than a 10, and sometimes 21 you know, works better than a 14. So you'd have to take the instrument and the time frame into account uh, and then decide which one works better. Daniel's asking, could you use a uh, MACD stochastic RSI and see whichever gives the first divergence on the same chart um, and perhaps get more signals? And, but don't stick to one, almost kind of switch between. Um, I do like to do that. The, the difficult part is if you're not used to charting, uh, you can end up with you know, your stochastic telling you to sell and your MACD telling you to buy because of the, the time lag between the two, one being a total lag in indicator, your momentum, a long to longer term momentum on the MACD, and then the stochastic being a really short term oscillator. Uh, if, you, if you do that, you have to have a rule for each type of indicator that you apply. So for, if the MACD fires, this is what I'm going to do, this is the how long I'm intending to hold the trade. Uh, if the stochastic fires, same thing. Um, another point, of course, divergence works on a stack of indicators. Uh, I just picked these for the presentation, but mm -hmm. you can do it on CCI and ADX and all the rest of it. 
Cool. Um, okay, so Lauren uh, throwing a bunch of questions at me. Uh, then which one do you use? Which indicator unlikely to have all three? That, that's your point. You're unlikely to have all three kick in, but if you're seeing it on one of the indicators, that certainly can be a, 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 a trigger. You wouldn't necessarily wait for all three to diverge, Warren? No, I, I wouldn't. Um, what's really great is when we get uh, there's a lot of talk in the market uh, in TA circles about whether we should use two like-minded indicators together such as the stochastic and the RSI. Mm -hmm. uh, my argument is if the one doesn't give me a trigger, the other will. Um, so I do like to use RSI and stochastic together. I, mm -hmm. I look for divergence on either one of them. Um, no problem because they are similar, they are shorter term um, and they are just measuring that really short term elasticity of the market. Uh, the MACD on the other hand is a lot slower. Your mentality has to change depending on which indicator you're applying. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I don't know if that answers the question. Uh, that, made, that made sense to me. Lauren, if it didn't make sense to you, come back to us. Uh, Alan's asking, um, could you use this in other words, divergence after a gap formation to help with close or no close of the gap? Lauren, does that make sense? Have you got a, a take there? Yeah, look, it's I like to look at gaps as support and resistance areas. So let's say, for instance, we've we've got a, a breakaway gap. Um, the market's been long; it now has a breakaway gap downwards. The bottom of that gap becomes resistance. So today, the price opens lower; it pulls back to that gap, that lower part of the gap, mm -hmm. and my indicator is divergent. Then, yes, I'm really interested. Gotcha. Uh, if that answers the question. They're confirming gap close. I don't think so because those indicators, you know, especially divergence by nature, is a turning point indicator. Uh, yeah. Whether it's you know within the trend or against the trend, it's Anything. a turning point indicator. Not so much. The and trend. I don't know about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, I've never I've never seen where a gap is created. Uh, the price goes lower, pulls back, comes down again, and gives me divergence to then go close the gap. I've, I haven't really taken note of that. I haven't seen it. Cool. Noted. A uh, question coming through around what they're seeing on the screen. Uh, Omnitrader offer. What's Omnitrader? Omni uh, 